In this video, we're going to look at the square wave, one of the best signals to use in all of PMF therapy. And we're going to use the IMRS 2000 as an example. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the oscilloscope, and then we're going to come back to the whiteboard. So stay tuned. Hello, this is Bryant Myers, author of PMF, The Fifth Element of Health. And in this video, I want to show you the IMRS 2000 square wave and go over the waveform and how the frequencies are calculated. Now, in fact, what you're hearing in the background is the MicMag Handy, which makes the square wave audible. And what you're hearing is, the, see these little, there's basically five square waves, and in between each square wave is a 36 millisecond pause. And each bundle of five, there is additionally an 81 millisecond pause in between those two bundles. And all that you're hearing is a packet of five. So, cause we can't really distinguish audibly that 36 millisecond pause. So you're hearing basically that first bundle of five and then the second bundle of five. And then you are hearing the pause in between. That's basically 1.67 Hertz meaning you're hearing 1.67 of those bundles of five pulses a second. And now it gets a little more complicated. Then you have four bundles of those that are separated by a longer pause. And this is, call, this is called pulse pause modulation. And it's used by IMRS, Beamer, QRS, and really good PMF companies that, that understand that you don't want to just have a repeating square wave because your body will acclimate or habituate or kind of get desensitized to it very quickly. You need to, just like when you go to the gym and work out, you don't want to just do 100 curls and leave. You want to do like a three sets of eight repetitions, rest in between sets, and then rest in between different exercises. And because PMF really is cellular exercise, the way that it moves charges through Faraday's law of induction that mimics exercise, uh, you do want to make sure that you have rest or pauses in between these bundles. It's kind of modulated with intelligence. I tell people it's complex complex modulation with intelligence. And the intelligence is g there to give you both a wide spectrum of frequencies, and an oscilloscope won't show that, that's a spectrum analyzer, and, but the oscilloscope will show you the rapid rise and fall, which is the DBDT, and it's that rapid rise of fall that gives the sharp edges to the square wave, and that's what's giving that maximum ion transport. And this is why the square wave, as Dr. Goodwin in the NASA study showed, is one of the most effective signals for healing and regeneration. So now that you've seen the IMRS 2000 square wave and why NASA found the square wave to be the most effective signal for healing and regeneration, let's now take a closer look at the square wave. And it's really fascinating Fourier series where you can take any periodic function or signal like a square wave or a sawtooth or a triangle wave and you can make it up or it can be represented with a series of sines and cosines as long as you use the right amplitude and the right frequency and the right combination. And that's where the, the math comes in. But with a square wave, which is what we're going to look at here, what it is is it ends up being odd integer frequencies that are combined with just the right amplitudes and it's kind of a, de a decreasing amplitude here. So here you can see the red is your low frequency, that's going to be your fundamental note, and then the green is a little bit higher, and that's going to say, again, you could say this is one hertz, three hertz, five, seven, and, and the more frequencies you use, the better the square waves, so, meaning the higher the, frequ if the higher the frequency spectrum or the broader the spectrum, the more closely you're going to get to a perfect idealized square wave. Now this is important because a lot of the cheaper PMF devices use only a couple terms in the Fourier series and you end up with a loppy square wave that's just ill-formed and it's not going to give you a sharp rise and fall. It gives you a really more of a gradual rise and fall. It's kind of more like a trapezoid here where a really good signal like you saw at the IMRS, it's a really sharp rise and fall. In fact, this little thing here, like just for accuracy, I had to put that in. This is called the Gibbs phenomena because when you take a, a, a huge series of sines and cosines that, that are the right frequencies and amplitudes to create a square wave, you, you end up overshooting with the higher frequencies. And you can never get a perfect square wave because you've got to go to infinity to do that. 
but you can get really close and the IMRS is one of the best that I've seen as far as creating that steep slope and we have so many testimonials with our pillow pad and probe so I've seen it firsthand help people. So when we look at it from the time domain, we're, we're going to see our square wave, like you saw in the video that I just showed you on a Roden Schwartz oscilloscope. But now I don't have a spectrum analyzer, but, but the IMRS spectrum is going to be, again, these odd integer uh, frequencies. And the nice thing, it's going to have a dominant frequency in the lower biologically active range. So the higher frequencies create the sharp edges, but note they're in lower amplitudes. They don't, they don't dominate the spectrum, but they're important in the oscilloscope to create the up, rapid rise and fall. And this is kind of like a ringing effect or a banging, so that way you, you get the, the maximum ion transport as we talked about in the video. So in conclusion, the square wave is one of the best signals to use in PMF therapy, but you got to use it right. You got to make sure that it's a well-formed square wave with a broad spectrum of frequencies to give you those higher ringing effect to give you the sharp edges for ion transport. And like I talked about in the video, you want to make sure that there's pauses between the pulses so that you're, you don't get cellular fatigue, meaning you don't just want to have your square wave repeat, repeat, repeat like that. You want to have some pulse pods modulation within your pulse strain. And it's good to switch polarity and, and do some other things as well. Again, be careful, you know, don't just believe any reviews chart just because a company says, oh, we've got a square wave. I mean, well, how well is it formed? How many terms are in your Fourier series to create your square wave? Is there pulse pause modulation? When we look at the frequency spectrum, what are the dominant frequencies? I mean, these are the questions you should be asking and, and a lot of, you know, the so-called experts and companies don't have the answer. And this is why I'm gonna do a lot of videos in this next year using a spectrum analyzer and, and, and a, an oscilloscope to really get some answers and to help show you what are the best PMF devices out there from a very physics and scientific point of view. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos coming. Leave some comments. I'd like to know what you think and, and tell me if there's any other videos that you'd like to see in the realm of PMF therapy. So thanks again and have a great rest of your day.